If you want to get stronger, build muscle, burn fat, improve your fitness, you have to push to your absolute maximum. Week in, week out, grind till you die. Well, maybe not. In fact, some people might actually get better results by taking it a bit easier, at least periodically. Welcome everyone, I'm Dr. Sam Spinelli, physical therapist and strength conditioning coach with Cis Athletics. Today we're going to be talking about deloads. Specifically, we're going to break down the science around deloads, why someone might want to do one, what they are, how to optimize them, and when you'd want to do one. So let's get into it. Depending upon what circle of fitness you come from, you may have never heard of the term. In a lot of groups, it's just train hard, week in, week out, if you can't handle it, get out. In other groups who are a bit more science-based and focused on the long term, you'll hear about this thing called deloads. For those who've never heard of a deload before, it's essentially where we just make training easier for about a week. The basic premise is that by going easier for about a week, it lets you recover, catching up from the hard weeks of previous training, because normally we push ourselves in trying to exceed what our normal abilities are as we try to increase our fitness, get stronger, improve some muscle mass. And so then by taking a week where we still train, but not as hard, we're able to recover, healing up, feeling better, moving better, and then hopefully getting better results in the future. While that sounds awesome, it leaves a lot of uncertainty. When should you deload? How should you deload? Should you decrease volume? Should you decrease effort? How much easier should your training be? Can you go too light or do too little of volume? Will that week of training actually make you lose muscle that you then have to recover and build back? Well, today we're gonna to be looking at the science all around those topics and addressing them, giving you a bit more certainty in how you could best implement deloads for yourself. Let's start off by discussing some of the theory around deloads. Basically, there's two main models that people operate off of that encourage why you might wanna consider using a deload. Number one, the super compensation model, and two, the fitness fatigue model. In the super compensation model, when we work out, we decrease our current preparedness. But with sufficient time to recover, we return back to baseline and can actually exceed our baseline, also known as super compensation. This is one of the main driving principles behind training. We don't want to just get back to baseline, but we actually want to be better off than before. So in the super compensation model, we challenge ourselves with a sufficient stimulus, we then recover from it, and we exceed our previous abilities by recovering. The fitness fatigue model expands on this a little bit more and gives us another way to think about it as well. In it, we look at fitness, fatigue, and performance. If we wanna improve our performance, we have two main options, to increase our fitness or reduce our fatigue. To increase our fitness, we need to train hard enough that it challenges our body to adapt and improve over time, such as building new muscle, improving our nervous system's ability to coordinate, and other options. As we do that though, it comes at the expense of accumulating fatigue. If we continue to train hard and keep accumulating fatigue on end, we're gonna exceed our ability to recover and gradually stop making progress. It's common to hear people complain about a lot of soreness, aches, and pains around this time, with injuries commonly popping up with continued pushing beyond recovery abilities. That's where a deload week comes in. By undergoing a temporary decrease in stress, it allows your body to recover from that previous stress. As well, we commonly see that individuals will progressively decrease in the amount of response that they have to different stimuluses. So if you continually to push yourself with the same routine, you're gonna have a hard time being able to adapt to that routine in the same way, either requiring more volume, more intensity, and other formats. Whereas if we temporarily decrease things, you can increase your responsiveness to that stimulus. And then deloads offer one more important detail, a mental break. If you've been pushing it for weeks on end and training really hard, you're probably sore, feeling beat up, but you're also possibly losing some interest in training and having a bit of a struggle with motivating yourself to go back into the gym. So deloads offer three main benefits. Number one, increased recovery. Two, increased responsiveness to training. And then three, increased desire to train, which is pretty huge. So now a lot of this is theoretical. So what does the actual research show us on this? The first one that we're gonna break down is, does going on a deload actually make you go backwards? So let's bust that with a few different research studies. The first one is from Ogasara et al, 2012. They took individuals and had them bench three times per week. 
measuring their cross-sectional area and their one rep max. They split them into two groups. The one group trained consistently for 24 weeks. The other group trained for six weeks, had a three week break, and then repeated that process until the 24 weeks ended. During the three week breaks or the deloads, the group did decrease their muscle size slightly, but when they came back to train, it recovered quickly. In fact, at the end of the 24 weeks, the group that trained consistently did have better results, but the difference was very minor and not even considered significantly different. Now, in that study, they stopped training completely for three weeks. So that's not exactly the same comparison. It's also not what we're suggesting. In contrast, we can look at a different study from Bickett et al, who is a bit more specific to this topic. Here they had individuals do 27 sets of leg exercises per week for multiple weeks in a row and then measured their quad size and strength. These individuals got bigger and stronger. Then they reduced their training down to just nine sets per week essentially dropping off two thirds. They then monitored them for weeks and they saw that they were able to maintain their results. This tells us that unless you stop training entirely, you shouldn't go backwards. So that's a really important piece on the deload. However, it doesn't necessarily tell us how much you should decrease your volume or intensity. So now the following studies are gonna help guide us a little bit more on that. The first one is from Ralston et al. and they looked at weekly set volume and the amount of gains individuals made. In their meta-analysis, they identified that performing at least five sets per week for a movement, such as squats or deadlifts, was associated with more results over the long term. If people traded with less than five sets, they still got results, but generally more volume resulted in more improvements. We also have a brand new systematic review and meta-analysis on this topic that showed that by getting in at least one hard set three times per week, we could maintain our progress. So again, a deload week isn't meant to try to make progress that week, but to recover from the previous weeks where you were pushing to make progress. So these two studies help to guide us in an idea on how much set volume we'd want to keep going forward with while on our deload. For instance, I was recently training my deadlift twice per week, doing six sets on one day and three sets on the other day. When I deloaded, I dropped my volume to four sets and two sets respectively. This worked out to about 70% of my volume and still cleared the five sets per week. Those studies were looking at volume, but what about intensity? Well, we can look at a different study on that topic. Last of Vicious 2018 looked at the response to different training intensities. They had people train unilateral bicep curls and unilateral leg press with different assignments for intensity, such as 20%, 40%, 60%, and 80% of the one max. In this study, they saw that if individuals trained with at least 40% of their one rep max, they made improvements with strength and muscle growth. This is pretty consistent for most of our research body that for the vast majority of individuals, if you're training a hard effort and using at least 30% of your one rep max, you're usually gonna be able to make progress. So when we consider this in the context of a deload, if you're generally using a decent amount of load, more in the training loads of 60% and higher, you're probably gonna be fine even just going to a lighter amount for that week. In my prior example, I dropped my volume by 30% and I decreased my intensity by 10%. This reduction made my training easier, not as straining, allowing me to recover and also giving me a mental break, but it didn't feel like it was so easy that I wasn't still training. Now, another question is how long should the deload be? Oftentimes it's said to be one week, but should it be longer? Should it be shorter? How long would we benefit from actually deloading? Well, we actually have a good study that we can reflect on this from Marrier. This study looked at maximizing performance in rugby sevens players at the end of a preseason training camp. They tested them in the mid thigh pole, sprints for force, speed, power, and also repeated sprint ability for endurance. Then they trained hard for four weeks and went into a taper where they got tested each week. Across the three week taper, their performance generally increased, but interestingly, their performance saw the biggest spike after just the first week of a reduced challenge. And then it didn't really significantly change after that. This tells us that if you're looking to maximize your performance, you might benefit from a longer deload, but if you're just looking to recover from training, you're probably fine with just a single week. So for those that happen to be tapering into a competition, again, you might wanna go for longer and multiple weeks of a deload, but for individuals that are just trying to get back to training, feel good and recovered, able to get back at it hard, one week is more than enough. All right, let's summarize what the research currently says on this as a whole. 
For most people, if you're training hard, following a good plan with a decent amount of intensity, decent amount of volume, and you're feeling like you need to recover, well then implementing a one week deload is probably a good idea. Usually you're gonna to wanna to try to get in at least one to two sets of hard effort three times per week. And that should chip you above that minimum threshold of about five sets, and also ensure that you're gonna be able to maintain your results. For most people, as long as you're using a decent amount of weight, not going down below 30%, and training somewhat close to failure, usually in that you know one to five reps in reserve range, you should be able to maintain your progress quite well. Hopefully this video helped clear up some questions and some details about deloads. A deload implemented well can be really beneficial for a lot of people. In most of our programs, we generally implement a small deload every four weeks as it just allows to get someone ready for the next block of training. We appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed the video, if you could smash that like button down below, it helps out a ton. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.